Coming up, a Johnny Quest diorama. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. In this video, I'm going to be working on a Johnny Quest diorama. Uh, Johnny Quest, one of my favorite animated shows that was produced in the 60s. Most of you are familiar with it. If you're my age, for sure, you're familiar with it. Um, but if just in case you're not, uh, it is an animated series that was first shown, I believe, in 1964. It didn't run for a long time. It actually had uh, only 26 episodes that were produced. But it really stands apart from a lot of other animated series in that the characters are beautifully drawn and stylized. I always thought it looked like a moving comic book. And the stories are really well done. Uh, they have a lot of fantastic adventures. There's a lot of cool sci-fi tech. And a lot of this, no doubt, was inspired by the um, James Bond craze of the day. So when I came across this, uh, these files on CG Trader, I was really excited. I've been wanting for some time for someone to produce something with Johnny Quest, and it was really cool to see. Um, I think you'll agree it's a pretty nice looking diorama. Now, I actually wasn't sure I was going to make a video of this project. In fact, I'm recording this during my hiatus from the channel. I usually take some time off just to catch up on some other things, mainly painting, uh, between the months of uh, December and January. Um, and start again with model building in February. But uh, I thought this would be a cool project to show you because uh, not only will I be working with figures, but we have to put everything into a base. And so there's gonna be a few things I need to do to blend all that together. If all this turns out great, uh, this is something I think I'll be bringing to Wonderfest this year. So uh, the files were designed by, uh, it just goes by UEL, I'm assuming it's a guy. And um, you can see if uh, you go to his link that I've placed below, he's done a lot of projects that were inspired by these old Hanna-Barbera uh, animated shows of the uh, 60s and early 70s. And again, if you're my age, you'll definitely recognize a lot of them. And I've actually seen a couple of them at Wonderfest uh, this last year. Uh, if you follow the link below, you'll get to see all his stuff that he's designed there. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Well, the first figure we'll take a look at here is that of Race Bannon. And let um, me just give you a closer look. This is his upper torso and shirt. You can see the detail of his face. And his right arm comes with a gun attached to it. And here's his left arm and the leg pieces. And comparing it to the way the figure is drawn, details are looking really good here. And this will be the first figure that I'll be working on. Next, we have Dr. Quest himself, and he comes in four pieces as well. Here is a look at his jacket and upper torso. So he has his lab jacket on, and this is a closer look of his face. And the leg piece here, and his uh, left hand and the right hand has a pair of binoculars attached to them. And this will be the second figure that I'll be working on. And next we have Johnny's friend, Haji. And he has uh, four pieces to him as well. There's his upper torso and the legs and uh, the two arms. And next we have Bandit. Really good likeness of his grumpy face there and his little body. And finally, the namesake of the show, Johnny Quest. Here's a look at his head and face. And he comes in six pieces. Here's his upper torso. Got his two arms there. His legs. And his feet were printed separately. And now let's take a quick look at the base. So you can see there are markings here for all of the feet. And uh, we've got these other three pieces that we'll be putting into place, and those are plants. Let me show you those real quick. So we've got uh, this one that goes at the end, or on the back end of the display. And we've got this one on the front. And we have this one that goes adjacent to the larger plant at the rear. So, as you can see now, there are gaps here. They don't fit exactly 100% perfect. So these have to be covered in, and the plan is to use um, epoxy sculpt putty 
and I can shape and mold that uh, epoxy sculpt putty so that it takes on the same texture as the surrounding area there. Now the feet will also, uh, let me just show you here with uh, raised banning. You'll notice that uh, when the feet are placed into here, it's also not a complete gap-free fit. So I'm going to have to also take some epoxy sculpt, placing them around the feet so that they blend into the base as well. Now one other thing to point out here with the stand or the display is how it's decorated along the side. It has the Johnny Quest logo, but you can see it also has the eye of the uh, spider robot. And I think there's a mummy's hand on this side here as well. So it should be a lot of fun to paint this up, and I'm definitely looking forward to working with it. Well, I ended up getting a little carried away with the base here. Um, I didn't mean to get this far, but I wanted to get a head start anyway before working on the figures. This was done by simply applying various layers of color, and rather than brushing it on, I just used both a sponge, like you see here, and also just an old brush that I uh, would dip into the paint and just kind of uh, go along just dabbing it onto the surface to give us uh, just a variety of textures and patterns. This was done with a few different colors. I started off with first uh, sponging on this here, this Hauser Medium Gray, and then jumped right into some of the highlights there with this Lime Green and uh, then applied some yellow green and some light browns and just kept going from one layer to the next and also started working on the rocks um, I've gotten a lot of experience now creating fake rocks and uh, so this was fairly easy to do again just by layering various colors and dry brushing and so forth and started working on some of these roots now for the plants I first tried using acrylics but felt they weren't vibrant enough so after applying the Hauser green as the base color I ended up enhancing the look with oils. Here you see me applying various shades of oils to the largest plant, and a fluid called liquin, which is used to speed the drying process, was mixed into the paints. And here's how they all turned out. All right, so I'm gonna move on now to the bottom section of the display. Well, I'm very happy with the way the base has turned out so far, and I've got two of the plants glued on now, so I'm ready to use the epoxy sculpt putty to blend this in. Very happy with uh, the way it's looking here as well and um, uh, just applying different layers of paint. Um, I would say there's probably about six or seven colors of paint that's uh, been layered on here. And you can see a few nods to the series here including the spider robot. We've got the snakes that you see at the beginning of the credits and also a mummy's arm. And uh, yeah, I think it's turned out real well. So I'm going to probably brighten this up here with the Johnny Quest logo, but I'll do that a little bit later. Uh, like I said, in the meantime, I have the plants now glued on place, and I've got one other to attach here, but I'm going to wait to do that until I get this blended in. So I'm going to proceed now with the epoxy sculpt, which I am actually going to tint with uh, some of the green color here. As we mold it in, at least the epoxy sculpt will take on this color of the surroundings there make it easier to paint over I think so uh, we'll get started on that right now The base is now completed and I'm very pleased with the way the plants now look blended in so that technique worked out perfectly and I did take time to spray on a gloss coat just to protect everything I've done here. Alright so ready now to get started with Race Bannon. The plan is to work on his feet and legs first and then attach them to the stand. Uh, the way that he pieces together uh, that should be pretty easy to um, attach the legs uh, first and then do the technique with the epoxy sculpt putty and then attach on the torso, arms, and the head. 
Well, these figures should be pretty straightforward to paint. Uh, as for Race Bannon, his pants are light gray, as you can see here. And he's got khaki colored shoes and a red shirt. Okay, well the pants and shoes are now completed. I started off with a base color for the pants of a neutral gray. This is from Vallejo Model Color Collection. And for the highlights I used a gray blue. And for the shadows I just darkened the neutral gray with a black. As for the shoes, one color I'd recommend if you are planning on doing this uh, diorama is this red leather by Model Color by Vallejo. And uh, worked out perfectly for the shoes. It's a, really almost an exact match of what you see on the animated series. I started off with a medium uh, camouflage brown, and over that I painted red leather. Uh, I then applied a gloss coat. As you can see, the entire thing has been gloss coated. And then I used a brown wash just to create a bit more detail on those shoes and then seal that up with a gloss coat. So the gloss will all be taken away eventually. This is all just to protect things as I'm moving along here. And the shirt also has been glossed over now, but it's now complete, just giving it a bit more time to dry uh, before we move on to the arms and the head. Well, you can see that uh, Race Bannon's legs and feet now have been added to the base and using the same techniques as those of the plants, everything worked out great. And his upper torso now has been completed along with his face and arms and the gun. For the flesh tones, I just used basic skin tone and beige red, both from Vallejo Model Color line. And uh, this is pretty easy now to attach to uh, his lower body there. Uh, but I'm going to leave this unattached while I'm working with the rest of it. I just don't want to take the chance of messing anything up, so I'm just going to put him away for now. Well, now it's time to move on to Dr. Quest, and as you can see, I've already started on his lab coat. My initial thought here was to use a base color of white mixed with a tiny bit of light blue. And as you can see, I've already started adding the shadows. But as I was working on this, I decided to go back to the DVDs. I should have done this to begin with, uh, to just see how he appeared in the episodes couple of the episodes that I pulled up, he didn't appear in his lab coat as often as I remembered, but uh, the first episode, as you can see, he appears in a white lab coat. But one of my favorite episodes is the Robot Spy, and in this episode, as you can see, the lab coat is kind of a light blue-gray. So now I don't know. I'm not sure which way to go. I'm kind of torn here, but I'm going to look at a couple other things and uh, get you caught up here in a second and show you what I finally decide. Well, I decided on the blue color after all, and I think it turned out well. And he is all done now. I've attached his hands as well as his head, and for his hair, I ended up using just a mix of various shades of brown. I added in some red, and I wanted to add a few different shades just to give it a little bit of texture. So, uh, his legs are also attached now to the base using the same technique as I did with Ray Bannon. And I think now would probably be a good time to spray on the dull coat as I'll have better access without the other figures in front of them. So I'm going to do that, but uh, also have gotten started on Haji now. And I attached his arms and uh, filled in the seams with some epoxy sculpt putty. So he is ready to prime. Well, Haji is just about done. Uh, as you can see, his pants are painted now. I, I used a mix of tan yellow and khaki brown. And for the shoes, I used ivory. And his jacket, I mixed in a little bit of tan yellow into the ivory, leaving his turban the lightest color. If you notice on the show, his turban's uh, basically a white color. Uh, but I want to use white as the highlight, so I didn't want to use uh, white as the base color. So I just used ivory for that. And uh, so I still have a little bit more work to do on his turban as well as his skin tones. But I'm going to go and attach his legs to the base. Okay, and this is how Haji turned out, and for his turban, I ended up using this uh, panel line accent color. It's a brown color here from Tamiya, and um, I think that worked out pretty well. Now for the ruby, I ended up painting the little area there silver first before applying Tamiya's clear red, and that worked out well. So I also have his legs now hooked to the sand and have already used the epoxy putty around his feet. All right, so two other figures left. We've got uh, Bandit and Johnny Quest. Well, working on Johnny Quest now, and Bandit will be the last figure that I'll work on, but uh, I wanted just to show you how well the highlights and shadows turned out on uh, Johnny Quest's shirt. It's too bad the other shirts weren't textured this way because it's so much easier to apply shadows and highlights to this um, this type of texture. So I ended up using a mixture of Prussian blue and a little black for the base color, 
lightened up the Prussian blue with neutral gray for the highlights and used black for the shadows, which you can hardly see. But uh, it turned out really well. The pants are completed, and I have to work now on his face, hair, and hands. And uh, as I said, Bandit will be the last figure. So I'm going to wrap all this up now and show you the completed project in just a second. Okay, well here we now have the completed Johnny Quest diorama. This again is a 3D printed piece and is a very nice rendering of the characters from the animated series. The adult figures stand about 6 inches tall, so I guess this makes it about a 1 12th scale model. I really loved how the designer captured the likeness of the characters down to the clothes they wear. I very much also like the poses of the characters. This is something that isn't easy to do in my opinion. Anyone who has tried to display action figures will know it isn't as easy as it looks to come up with dramatic and dynamic poses. It really does add a lot to the overall look of the diorama. As for painting, I tried my best to duplicate the color seen on a TV show and I'm very pleased with it all. I used wet blending techniques to create shadows and highlights, which I initially planned on looking a lot more stark and defined but I decided on a more subtle approach. Every time I went heavy with the shadows and highlights, it just didn't look good to me, and I decided eventually just to settle on what you see here. I love how the floor of the base is decorated with elements and features that would be seen in a rainforest. This, of course, reflects the exotic locations they often found themselves in. One of the funnest parts of the build was painting on various layers of color to achieve the variety of colors and shades you would find in a rainforest or jungle. The designer also included some taller plants that were nicely sculpted, and I decided on using oils to enhance the look of them. The designer added in some nice touches along the bottom rim, which not only includes the Johnny Quest logo, but some nods to a few episodes. And these all really pop when they're painted. Well, just a few other things to go over with you here. First of all, my Elegu Saturn isn't large enough to accommodate the base that you see here with this project. I actually had to divide it in half, and uh, this was done with a program called Mesh Mixer. And uh, after they were printed, I glued them together with super glue, and I used epoxy sculpt to blend in the seam there so you couldn't see it. So epoxy sculpt was very helpful with this particular project. I really do enjoy working with it. It's uh, very, very easy to mold and sculpt and especially with water, uh, it makes it, it softens it up a bit so that you can really use your tools to, to make it look right. And once it's dried, it hardens quite nicely and it takes up paint really well. So if you're a Johnny Quest fan, I'd highly recommend these files. I'll post a link below. Now, one other thing I wanted to share with you is back in April of 2022, I had the pleasure of meeting two of the animators that worked on Johnny Quest. Uh, both Willie Ito and Tony Benedict were here for a show called Comic Fest. This is a smaller comic books festival, which really is a small little Comic-Con, the way Comic-Con used to be many, many years ago. You literally can walk up and just buy a ticket. You don't have to go through a bunch of hoops to try to get tickets for this show. But I've been to it a couple times. They postponed it between the years of 2020 and 2021, as you could understand. But they did bring it back in 2022, and both those guys were here for a panel. And these are now pictures of Mr. Ito and Mr. Benedict at the panel as they spoke about their days in animation. They were very interesting to listen to as they told stories about the early days of animation and television and, of course, about their experiences at Hanna-Barbera. They not only worked on Johnny Quest, but the Herculoids, Space Ghosts, and a whole host of others as well. And as you can see, they were open to meeting fans after the panel. I was able to go up to them and talk with them in person, and it really was an honor and a pleasure to meet them. And before wrapping up, I thought I would revisit this here. This is, of course, a Dragonfly from Johnny Quest. This is the Mobius Models uh, kit of the ship. And uh, you can still find the model kit around. I saw it at my hobby store just recently, and you can certainly find it online. It's not a terribly expensive kit, but it does make a beautiful replica of the jet that you see on the show. Pretty nice jet to get around with, right? <laughs> um, and one thing that I've noticed, however, through the years since building this, is that I've seen other modelers uh, take some sort of liner to enhance the panel lines because there are some nice panel lines that are scribed on the fuselage there and on the wings. And at the time that I was building this, I was really uncertain on what to do with those panel lines. And I wish now that I had done that. So I do plan on 
at some point going back and doing that, I think it would look much better. The one thing I did do was to light the kit, and I can't really show you now how these lights look because the uh, battery connection uh, needs to be fixed, but I did put some LEDs here and an LED in the engine, but I wouldn't bother with that. The lighting honestly didn't do much to enhance the model, especially because these areas are fairly small. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.